In our last lecture, we talked about competitive strategy and how these strategies are incorporated from the top down in an organization. Now we're going to expand on that and discuss how we can take strategies and uh, implement those operationally. When we create an operational strategy, our goal is to create a competitive advantage. A competitive advantage is a firm's ability to achieve market and financial superiority over your competitors. And every organization wants to create that competitive advantage over the competitors because that'll help to create a long lasting, sustainable uh, business within the markets that you're in. A strong competitive uh, advantage is difficult to copy, often because of a firm's cultures, habits, and some costs. And so you can't just, um, when you have an organization, think this is the competitive strategy that I want to have and potentially be able to comp compete with some of the market leaders. Uh, those things take a long time uh, to focus on and build upon uh, within your organization. So competitive strategies are driven from the top down, but then it's the operations team's job to execute on those competitive strategies. So there's three ways to achieve competitive advantage, and that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture. There's three different ways to create a competitive advantage, and that's to create products and services that are unique or they have differentiation. Okay, unique or differentiation. Another competitive strategy or advantage would be cost leadership. So being able to provide products or services that are less expensive than your competitors. The third competitive advantage is responsiveness or quick or fast. So there's three main competitive advantage. That's differentiation, which is unique, cost leadership, which is cheap, and responsiveness, which is quick. So now we're going to play a little game and humor me for just a second here, and, and uh, hopefully you'll play along. Uh, but I'm going to name off some companies, and I want you to think, do they focus on having a competitive advantage of differentiation, cost leadership, or responsiveness? Amazon. Apple. Walmart. Yeti. Pizza Hut. Southwest Airlines and REI. Okay, so for each one of those, you probably thought in your head, okay, quick, unique, cheap, um, you know, responsiveness, cost leadership. You, you, you know, I, I picked a couple, right, of, um, of different types of organizations and competitive strategies there. But each one of those organizations focuses on one of these competitive strategies. They do not incorporate all of them. Uh, so they are focusing on a competitive advantage that they are working on operationally to be able to uh, achieve the target audience uh, that was determined within the strategy um, in the strategic planning. So if we're going after this target market, we're going to create an operational strategy and competitive advantages that help us to achieve that overall company mission and vision. So all of these have created all of these companies that I just mentioned, they've created that competitive advantage. Those are difficult to copy. And uh, so now we're going to talk about some of the, we're going to go in a little bit more in depth on each one of these competitive advantages. So let's dive in a little bit more on each one of these strategies for competitive advantage. The first one is differentiation. So what we mean by differentiation is we're going to make a product that's better or at least different, but really we want to focus on the uniqueness of that product. It can go beyond the physical characteristics and service attributes that encompass everything that impacts the customer's perception of value. Okay, the customer's perception of value. Having a high quality, unique product that's um, different than what the competitors offer is when you're focusing on the differentiation competitive strategy. When you have products that are unique and high quality, you can charge a premium in the marketplace versus your competitors. And that, and, and generally, the um, the organizations that offer a product that's differentiated, highly unique, they are generally um, not as effective during downturns in the market because they have a lot of brand loyalty, they have a consistent year-over-year -year revenue, and when things do rebound, they generally rebound quicker as well. The next competitive advantage is cost leadership. This is making products and services that are cheaper. Not cheap, but cheaper. This is providing the maximum value as perceived by the customer and having being the low cost leader or focusing on cost leadership 
does not imply that you are providing a low quality product. Um, so when we are when we focus on a low cost strategy, there are lots of things that operations and organizations can do to make sure that they are reducing their costs and those costs can be passed on to you, the consumer. So working on making lean operations, um, matching capacity with demand, um, having low overhead and all of those kind of things. When, when an organization can bring their costs down, then they can bring your costs down as well and really focus on that cost leadership competitive advantage. Next would be response. This is having products that are fast or quick or um, being able to uh, come to market quickly with new flexible products that are innovative and uh, match the customer requirements at that time. So response generally means flexibility, reliability, and timeliness. So reliability is really just meeting schedules, um, getting products there when you say that you can, whether it's uh, through shipping or if you can turn around uh, and have a, a short lead time. Uh, that would be reliability and meeting schedules as well. Timeliness is quickness in design, production, and delivery. So when you think about timeliness, you think of companies that do things super fast uh, because they design, they produce, and they deliver quickly. So just a real quick couple examples of, of differentiation. That would be Yeti coolers, Hard Rock Cafe, Disneyland, you know, the little game we played earlier with when, when I mentioned all those companies, whether it be Apple or Yeti or whoever it may be, Walmart, Southwest. When you think of differentiation, these are companies that have unique products um, or high quality products, or they can provide an experience better than other uh, services or products. Some examples of cost leadership would be Southwest Airlines, Walmart, or McDonald's. And some examples of um, response time would be Hewlett Packard, Amazon, and Pizza Hut. Okay, so let's dive into differentiation here for just a second. Uh, this is distinguishing the offerings of an organization in the way that a customer perceives that value. Again, we're really focusing on uniqueness and high quality. Um, and when you are an operations manager, uh, you are assisting and defining everything about that product or service that will influence the potential value to the customer. So you are creating high quality, highly unique products and services that match the customer requirements. To me, uniqueness is really just about building products and services that are better than your competition. So you can see, um, you know, I put a couple pictures on the screen between Yeti and Safe Skin Gloves or Rolex. You've heard of many of these organizations before because their products are unique, they're high quality, they're known in the market. Um, and just a real quick, kind of funny story, uh, but about 10 years ago, Yeti reached out to me to be their director of supply chain. And I hadn't heard of them. Okay, this was 10 years ago, so don't, so don't mock me too much. Um, and they didn't have any sales in San Diego, right? They were highly condensed just in the South. But um, at the time, they only had a couple products. And so when they were interviewing me, and I was out there in Austin, and they could, they could see it on my face, I wasn't that impressed that the fact that they were selling a $400 or $500 cooler, they only had a couple products, and I didn't see their uniqueness or their differentiation. Clearly I was wrong, and again, it's easy to say that 10 years later, but I didn't see the value of that product. So Yeti has done a great job of uh, making a high quality product that the market sees having value and people are willing to pay a premium for a cooler and other products. Um, but you know, Yeti coolers will keep ice cold for many days. They're bear resistant um, and they have very much a cult following because of their high quality. So when you create a product like that, that's different, that's unique, that's high quality, you are going to generally gain market share and have very, very loyal customers. From an operations side, you're also responsible for experience differentiation. This is engaging our customers with products and services that help them to experience your product with all five senses. So the customer experiences that product or service. So an example would be Disneyland. When you go there, uh, you know, you hear, you hear music, you see lights, you smell the, the food. And just everywhere you go, you're looking at something that's amazing, whether it's a tall castle or a big lake in the middle of the property, whatever it may be. The operations team is responsible for making that product and differentiated, unique and high quality. It's not the sales and marketing team that does that stuff. 
It's the operations team that make that product or service that much better than, than the competition, and that's a competitive advantage. Okay, cost leadership. Um, almost every industry has a low price market segment and a low price market leader. So when we think about cost leadership, a low price market segment, that could be the hotel industry, the airline industry, the car industry, the clothing industry. So every industry has different segments. And within those segments, think about hotels. There's the expensive resorts where you go and you spend a fortune, but you stay on vacation there, like the Ritz-Carlton. Then there's the ones that are nice and most of us stay at when we go on vacation, maybe a Marriott or a Sheraton. And then there's the low price market segment, which is when people are on a budget and they don't have the money to spend on those nicer hotels. So all industries have various pricing segments and they all generally have a low price market leader. Low price does not imply low quality. So when we think about someone who's a leader in low costs, we think of Southwest. Southwest Airlines is one of the few airlines that's been consistently profitable and they have a low cost strategy. And to have a low cost strategy, you can't just charge less because then you're not going to be profitable. You have to have operations that support bringing down your internal costs so you can pass along those lower prices to your customers. So how does Southwest do it? They do it in lots of ways because this is their competitive advantage, but they focus on keeping their operations simple. They have one type of aircraft, they, so therefore they don't have to do as much training. If they find themselves in a pinch with their pilots, they can call another pilot because all the pilots are trained on 737s. There's no seat assignments, right? And the reason there's no seat assignments is that gets people on the planes quicker. If you can believe it or not, having no seat assignments, people get on the plane quicker. The flight attendants, when you leave the plane, you ever notice that they're walking back and they're cleaning the plane as you're deboarding? That helps save a few minutes here and a few minutes there. Bags fly free. This one is always a fun and interesting topic. People think that bags fly free as a marketing scheme and although it, it does work and it helps to gain interest in people flying Southwest because it's gonna keep your costs lower. One of the reasons that Southwest has bags fly free, you can check your bags for free, is Think about when you get on an airplane and every time someone's taking their carry-on and they're trying to find space for it up high. You know, you got little old grandma here who's trying to put her bag up high and then it takes a minute for her to find a spot to put her bag and then get in her darn seat. So Southwest lets bags fly free because it gets people on and off planes quicker. So all of these things, when you, when you add them up together, Southwest can f make one more flight per day because they're so efficient and having all that low overhead, the lean operations um, helps them to keep their costs low and then therefore they can pass along those costs to their customers as well. All right, responsiveness. Responsive is the last competitive advantage. Response is a set of values related to rapid, flexible, and reliable performance. For me, time is one of the best competitive advantages because I'm impatient. I wanna get things quickly. I wanna be in and out. Uh, of, of places as quick as I can. I don't want to wait in line and I, and I want consistency and performance, quick, quick um, performance. So the three aspects of response to create a competitive advantage are flexibility, reliability, and quickness. And what those mean very briefly is flexibility is the ability to match market challenges through innovation. So like HP does, uh, as the market changes, how quickly can you design and get new products out to the market and have flexible manufacturing and flexible engineering teams to where you can get your products out to the market very quickly and create a competitive advantage. Reliability and performing uh, on time per a schedule. Amazon's a great example of that, uh, especially um, during the holidays, right? When everyone uh, needs deliveries, if they say it's gonna be there on Tuesday, it's going to be there on Tuesday. If they say it's going to be there on Wednesday, it's going to be there on Wednesday. And so Amazon is extremely reliable performing to the schedule uh, that they have determined for your packages. But reliability is also um, in, in other industries. It would be if you say, hey, we can do this construction project in one month versus your competitor who says they can do it in two months. 
if you can do it in that one month, you can do it reliably, that is going to give you a competitive advantage versus your competitors. I come from a manufacturing background and by working on many of the operational and supply chain strategies you're going to learn in this course, we were able to cut our customer lead times down from six months. We made, we, we made custom power supplies. We were able to cut our lead time down from six months to two months. And by doing so, we gained a whole lot of market share because most of our customers couldn't wait six months for our products. But because we were able to reduce our lead time and have a reliable delivery schedule to them, we gained market share. All right, and lastly, quickness. That's the speed in product development, production, and delivery. When you think of quickness, you think of things that can happen fast. So fast oil changes, fast haircuts, fast pizza delivery, right? Um, so Pizza Hut used to say they'd get you a, a delivery within five minutes or so, or 10 minutes or something like that um, after, after they leave the store. Uh, but they no longer do that because there were so many car accidents. But quickness is speed in product development, production, and delivery. So those are the three different uh, strategies for competitive advantage. And I can't believe up to this point, I, I didn't mention this already, but you typically can't have all three. In fact, it almost, uh, it never happens, frankly, that you have a competitive strategy where you're focusing on all three things. You can't be an innovative company with high quality products and also be the low cost leader and also be uh, the most timely you know, with, with fast response and delivery, something's going to have to give. There's a trade-off there. So when you're in operations and you know what your organizational strategy is, you must focus your operational strategies on, on matching the organizational strategy so you can have that competitive advantage. So if you're working on differentiation and unique products, you're going to have to create systems and supply chains in, in place to support that high quality, highly unique product. If you're in a organization where the low cost leadership is their competitive advantage, then you have to create systems that helps to reduce expenses, reduce overhead, reduce inventory so that you can bring down your costs and pass along those low costs to your customers. If you're in an organization that focuses on uh, speed, on, uh, res on responsiveness, then you have to think of ways to reduce lead times and cut processes uh, from you know two days to one day and, and just seconds here and seconds there so that you can get your products delivered to your customers quicker um, and, and highly reliable uh, per the schedules that you've determined. So there is a trade-off that occurs when um, you are working on your competitive advantage. You can't be all things to everyone. You have to focus on that competitive operational strategy and really know what your competitive advantage is so that you can focus on that with your operational strategy.